Today, I'm going to show you a couple ways to fix damage in poly tubing and poly pipe like this. I'm going to go through every way you can repair your pipe. And by the end, I'll be able to share with you the method I recommend most. But before we jump into doing the actual repairs, I want to go over the many different options for repairing your tubing so you can decide which one will be the best for your specific needs. Here we have four different types of repair couplings. We have a barbed insert fitting. These are pretty easy to use, and if you use the right one, you don't have to use clamps. Some of them come with an extra large flared barb that can be done without a clamp. They're not the easiest to reuse, though. Then we have a compression fitting. Anyone who's used these knows they're probably one of the hardest types of fittings to use, particularly if you're inexperienced with them, and they should not be reused. Here we have a lock style fitting. This is probably one of my favorites because it kind of hits that sweet spot of being affordable, reusable, and easy to use. Instead of clamps, it just uses these little locking nuts on the end. And then finally we have the drip lock fitting. This one's probably the most expensive way to fix your tubing, but it's also the easiest. You just push your tubing in and give it a firm little push and it'll set in place much easier than on a compression fitting. Outside of the traditional repair couplings, there is one more way you can repair poly tubing and well, almost any kind of pipe or tubing type, and that's self-fusing repair tape. This stuff will bond with almost anything. If you'd like to learn in depth about each of these types of fittings, don't bother going to Google. I made a video that you can check out there in the top right that goes in depth on each and every one. I've also created a table that you can pause and check out now or check out later because it's linked in the description below that breaks down the estimated costs of these fittings. Now, prices, of course, are going to change over time, but the relative cost should hold up. All right, with all that in mind, let's take this information out into the field and do a few repairs. If you need to fix a piece of damage that is too big to fix with just one coupling or maybe a really small hole that may not need a coupling, check out the video in the top right or I'll leave it in the description below so you can refer to it after watching this video. Let's start with the barbed coupling with shallow barbs. This is the cheapest method if you already have clamps lying around. We're gonna use a worm gear clamp for this first example. I'm gonna cut out the damaged section as close to the damage as I can so I don't waste too much of the tubing. Cut far enough away that you can make a nice, clean, even cut on both sides. Now, I'm gonna use this barbed coupling to join the two undamaged sections together. Once I have the barb inserted on one end, I'll add clamps to each end of the tubing before inserting the other end. Once you've got the tubing all the way over the barbs, it's time to tighten the clamps. These are simply steel worm gear clamps. You can use a flathead screwdriver or the hex end of a key punch to easily tighten down your clamps. Now, you'll notice I put the screws on opposing sides. That's to even out the pressure of the clamps a little bit. Sometimes you might even use two clamps per barb, and when you do, it's also best to make them opposite. You're not limited to worm gear clamps, though to some degree they're handy because they are reusable, they can be removed, but you can also use pinch clamps, which are pinched together with the crimp tool and are not reusable, and the plastic ratchet clamps, which when used with this coupling is the least expensive of these three different clamp types. But I'd give all of these three barbed fitting with clamps methods a two out of five stars on ease of installation. These will all provide you a long lasting connection, but you can definitely do better. If you're gonna be repairing your tubing with a barbed insert coupling, see which kind you got, as there's two kinds out there that are both pretty popular. One has a shallow barb. Now these are pretty easy to push the tubing on over, but it's gonna need to be clamped after you get it secured, just like we did earlier. The other type of barb insert coupling looks like this, and it has a larger flared barb. Now up to about 30 PSI, you don't need clamps for this, but if you're putting it in the ground or burying your tubing, I would still recommend the clamp. It's better safe than sorry, unless you have thousands of them to do. The reason why you want to use clamps on the one with the smaller barb is because when the tubing gets hot, it's very easy for it to slide off, particularly when it's under pressure. Now, pulling the tubing off isn't easy with your hand, but it is the hotter the tubing gets. Now, that brings me to my next point, reusability. That makes the one with the smaller barb pretty easy to reuse. Technically, you can reuse the one with the larger barb, but it's going to be very difficult to get the tubing off the barb. You should see the tubing when it's installed on over this. There's quite a big lump where this barb grips the tubing. Let's see how it is to install this deep barb insert fitting. So with barb insert fittings, it can be pretty tough to get the tubing on over the barb, particularly the one with the larger barb. So to make it easier, I'm going to dip the end of my tubing into a cup of very hot water for a few moments. This will soften up the tubing a lot and make it significantly easier to push on over the barb. Push it all the way in until it meets the stop 
and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'll give this a three out of five on ease of installation since it is tough to insert these barbs without hot water, but this process is definitely less involved than the clamp methods. Let's move on to compression fittings. The biggest downside to compression fittings is they're not reusable, but the upside is that they're among the cheapest ways to fix your irrigation lines. Now, the reason they're not reusable is because there's a compression ring inside that grips onto the tubing, so it's very difficult to get it out. While technically, you could cut away the tubing, or maybe you're strong enough to pull it out, by that time, the compression ring inside will have its integrity compromised to some degree, and when it comes to things like irrigation, it's just not worth the risk. To install a compression fitting, to repair damaged tubing, cut out the damaged portion of the tubing, just like you would with any other fitting, then push the tubing into the end of the fitting. Be warned, it will take a lot of elbow grease. There is a bit of a trick behind using compression fittings that come with repetition. While applying pressure, quickly walk the tubing back and forth. This will help insert the tubing into the compression ring. God. Whew. Yeah, as you can see, using a compression fitting is not easy at all. Now, one quick tip. You can dip the ends of the tubing in hot water to make it a little easier to insert the tubing into the fitting. You can also use some non-toxic dish soap to work as a lubricant. It makes it a little bit easier to get the end of the tubing into the compression ring. I give the compression fitting a one out of five stars for ease of installation. Pros love these because they are cost effective and pros get their reps in on these almost daily. But for a DIYer that doesn't do irrigation for a living, compression fittings are hard to recommend. For this damaged section of the tubing, we're gonna use a drip lock coupling to repair to it. Now, the benefit to a drip lock coupling is they're simply the easiest to use. They work kind of like a compression fitting where you push the end of the tubing in, but instead of a compression ring, it has teeth that kind of bite into the fitting. You might've heard of bite fittings, but they're a lot easier to use than compression fittings. And they're completely reusable. To remove tubing, you simply pull back on those two little knobs right there. At the same time, you give a quick push and a pull of the tubing, and it'll come right out. To use a drip lock fitting, you cut out the damaged area like you would any other fitting, then firmly push the tubing into each end of the fitting. You can then tug on it to confirm it's firmly secured. I give drip lock fittings a five out of five stars for ease of installation. It can't get any easier than this. The drawback is that although they are reusable, we found that sometimes it's tough to remove them. So while I do recommend them, if you just want the easiest installation possible, well, I can't recommend drip lock if you plan to reuse them. Here, we have some damaged three quarter inch tubing. Now, we bought a lot of half inch repair couplings with us today, but that's obviously not gonna do the trick on three quarter inch tubing. So for this, we're gonna use this repair tape. So all you have to do is take a strip of it off, it's perforated to make it easy. Remove the plastic, be very careful not to fold this back on itself or you're gonna waste a piece. And then you wrap it around the damage. Just make sure it gets nice and tight. The tighter it is, the better the bond is gonna be. All right, just clean the tubing off a little bit so you don't have any debris getting in the way and then start wrapping. I'm gonna hold it down with my fingers, pull it tight and around we go. There we go, a permanent fix. I give repair tape a three out of five on ease of install. It is simple and intuitive once you get the hang of it, but the placement of the tape is the most difficult part. It must be placed just right to make a good seal. Onto the fitting that I hands down recommend over any other method, the twist and lock fitting. Even though it's not the least expensive method, this is my favorite method. You don't need clamps. It comes with locking nuts on it that serve as the clamps. All you have to do is push the tubing on over the barb, turn the locking clamp, and you're done. No crimp tools, no extra clamps, nothing. I give Twist and Lock a 4 out of 5 for ease of installation. Still, I recommend these over any others because not only are they incredibly durable and are the second most affordable repair fitting, but they are the easiest fitting to reuse. You may think when repairing that you don't care about reusing the fitting, but it may take you a couple of tries to get your repair just right. And years and years down the road, you may end up replacing this section of tubing and you'll be able to take this fitting out and use it elsewhere. It's easy to underestimate how much time using something like a permalock fitting can save you. You might look at a pile of fittings and think, oh, well, that's not too bad, but it could take you an extra hour or even hours to put clamps on a barbed insert fitting or to get that push into the compression fitting just right. And with compression fittings, you only get one use. If you mess up your insert and get it in crooked, you might not be able to reuse that fitting. I'm not the only one who recommends twist and lock fittings. We've gotten a lot of feedback over the years. People who have had extensive use of all the other fitting types have settled on twist and lock for even their largest project. If you'd like to learn 16 more tips to keep your irrigation system running smoothly and efficiently, check out the video right there.